Well, hey everyone, what day is this? This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, I will. It is Tuesday, July something. I think it's July 28, uh, 2015. And this video is by special request. Uh, I get a lot of uh, comments about this quilt in the background. Everybody always sees it in the background. And uh, Carol asked me yesterday or the day before if I would please tell her how you make a quilt like this. Now obviously I'm sure she knows how to piece a quilt together. What she wants to know is about the pictures. So I'm going to tell you about the pictures and how you do the pictures today. Now, <clears throat> you will notice in my pictures um, that I have added words to my pictures. It's pictures of all of our grandchildren and me and my husband and it was a surprise for his 60th birthday. Now I started quilting oh a little bit before that time. I got my um, long arm in 2006 and this is 2015. So let me see, what is that, six, seven, eight, about nine years? And uh, yeah, and so I made this eight years ago when he was 60 years old. So I hadn't been quilting seriously for very long, but I did have my long arm. But um, when I put this quilt on the long arm, I freehanded the designs on it, and I really wasn't very good at that time. And so the things aren't perfect like I like them to be, but my, they were perfect enough for my husband. <laughs> In these little squares, there's a zero in every square, and I actually used a little plastic circle template and used the uh, long arm to go around it. Little did I know that was an advanced step that not beginners usually can do, <laughs> but I did it in every single square. But I did all the rest myself. Here I used some ruler work and did X's, and here I did some ruler work and did what's called piano keys, which is just a stripe going out every so often. So, insofar as the pictures, I had uh, all of these pictures in my computer because, you know, back then digital cameras had come out. And so you just plugged the camera into your computer and dumped all the pictures on your computer. And our grandkids were little. Well, they were eight years younger <laughs> back then. And they used to come and spend a lot of time because Jerry and I live on a lake down here. And uh, we have 11 acres and we've got a four-wheeler and we've got a a mule and we've got tractors and dozers and and things that the kids like to do and we have a pond and so the kids used to love to come they don't like to come that much anymore but they did then so i had lots and lots of pictures is my point of the grandkids doing things with their papa so i used those pictures and then i used some pictures of us i happened to have this picture of us dancing downstairs in the hall um, we had company, I think it was for Thanksgiving, and uh, we had um, speakers on our front porch and our back porch that we put in when we built this house. And we're not on the front and back porch, but that's where the dance started. <laughs> we were sitting on the front porch, and Jerry turned the speakers on so we could hear the music out there. Well, my, my daughter and her husband right here, he loves to dance. And so he stood her up out of her chair and started dancing with her. And so then we started dancing, and then, I don't know, we came in the house and we were still dancing. <laughs> and so Tammy snapped this picture of Jerry and I dancing in the hall. And so I was so excited to have it. I, I, what I wrote next to it says, and I, what I call my husband is Burnsides. Uh, my mom always called him Sideburns. I have no idea why he barely has any sideburns. And I called him Burnsides and all kinds of other nicknames. But anyway, it says, dance with me forever, Burnsides. You're just a baby compared to how long I will love you. So that's the words I put next to that one. Okay? And so everyone, I figured out some kind of words to say. And so... I would just put my picture in, let me see, where did I put the words at? I guess I put it in Word, or maybe I put it in um, Print Shop. But someplace I was able to put the picture and add words to it. Of course, now I have Photoshop, and you could certainly do it there. So each one has words, okay? So um, I'm going to pause this and uh, set up all the different products that I have, and then I'll show you how you decide what you want to use to put your pictures on, okay? Okay, let's talk fabric printer sheets. Oh my goodness, if y'all have 
have watched my blog very long, you know that when I start a hobby, I am the type of person to order one of everything that goes with it. <laughs> I used to cross stitch when I was in my 20s. Uh, married Jerry when I was 25, so from 25 to 30 to 35, I used to love to cross stitch. And I had one of every single color of that floss that you cross stitch with. And then I had this big book with a whole bunch of not pages, but sections. And each section had a whole bunch of holes poked in it. And you could take your thread uh, and unwrap it and open it up and cut it in 18 inch pieces, I think it was. And then you thread it through the hole and loop it. And I spent hours and hours and hours doing that. And I had one of every single color of thread. And I want you to know that years later, <laughs> I gave that away to the Goodwill along with probably 200 books of cross stitch design. Somebody got a really, really good deal if they got that at the Goodwill. So anyway, decided to do a picture quilt for my husband because my husband was always not impressed with the quilts that I was doing. And back then I was piecing quilts, sewing squares together, diamonds together, you know, and I would make a quilt and think it was so gorgeous and I would show it to him and he would just go, well, what's the point of it? It doesn't have any pictures. I don't get it. What's the point of it? So I would run out of my room, throw myself on the bed and cry for three hours. <laughs> so finally, it was gonna be his 60th birthday and I had a long arm. I bought a long arm just the year before and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna make him a picture quilt. <laughs> so I can finally make a quilt he'll actually like. So, starting a new project, I knew absolutely nothing about it other than people made them. And so, I started investigating and I looked into all the products and I ended up buying, I don't know, five or six different ones. I also bought this, which is very, very helpful. If you're going to start making picture quilts, I would suggest you buy this if it's still available. It was $20.95, but you can probably get it at half price or something. This is Lynn Coolish, teaches you printing on fabric. Very, very helpful and informative. She talks about all different kinds of fabric you can print, in, print on, not just cotton. Anyway, I got that and I watched it several times. Then I started buying the printer fabric. Actually, I think I probably bought this later because I was so confused that there were so many different products. I bought the June Taylor fusible printer fabric sheets. I bought the Electric Quilt Company sew-in printer fabric sheets. I bought this, which was the most expensive, printed treasures. Let me see, yes, the reason I did not like printed treasures, maybe you can see it, it's very yellow. I thought, oh my goodness, if this stuff starts out yellow, what's it gonna end up like in 50 years from now? So this hasn't even been used. I have the whole package of it, there it is, not used. <clears throat> this is the Electric Quilt Printables Inkjet Fabric Sheets. Now I'm sure these are very good quality and I actually printed out a lot of pictures on it. Here's one that I printed out on it <clears throat> of my grandson Jacob Troy. And you can see the picture's fine, the printing's fine, but the fabric sheet is not white. It's an off-white or a cream color. I call it yellow. And actually this is eight years old and it hasn't gotten any worse, but it, um, this is our other grandson Walker. Um, it um, has been in a package for eight years too. So, anyway, I started to use this and decided, hey, I really need to go get white because I was afraid this would get even yellow a little And you can see I bought a whole bunch of it. So, that's the electric quilt. And I imagine that the electric quilt company um, makes it in white also. I don't know for sure. This is the June Taylor Fusible, which I bought many sheets of it directly from June Taylor because uh, Hobby Lobby and Joann's, um, they only carry like five or ten sheets in a package and I knew I was going to need way more than that. So I ordered it directly from June Taylor, which you can do. And um, 
I ordered two different kinds from her right here. I ordered the Color Fast, which is the sew-in, and I ordered 250 sheets. And then I ordered this um, Quick Fuse White, which is the fusible, and it doesn't say how many sheets is in it, but there's at least 50, okay? So here's the Quick Fuse, and then here is the Color Fast Sew-in, 250 sheets. And this is what I ended up using. I really like fusibles, as you know. I just fused those three tur giant turtles. But I felt like the sticky on the back of the fabric made it a little bit stiffer. Plus, I thought the sew-in, when I sewed it with my uh, strips and I sewed it onto the background, I figured it would stay, you know, a whole lot better forever than the fusible kind, okay? Here is the June Taylor Color Fast so in it ended up being my very favorite i liked the idea of fusing but <clears throat> i decided that the sew in would probably stay a whole lot longer and if you were going to wash it it would be better if it was sewn on than fused on so i ended up using this and i really loved the paper and i really loved the way the prints came out okay and you can see i have 250 sheets of it here so if anybody would like some, <laughs> maybe I could sell you some of mine. Heaven knows I have enough of it. Read the directions. The directions are very important because if you don't follow the instructions, you're going to end up with a quilt that has pictures on it that are going to get all messed up if they get wet or if you put them in the washer. Now, the directions usually say to hand wash. so or to wash, um, I would wash it on a delicate cycle in a washing machine. That wouldn't be a problem for me. But since mine's hanging on the wall, and I don't know, I guess most picture quilts you would probably want on a wall, I've never washed mine. So I can't tell you what happens after you wash it. But I can tell you, everybody and their dog makes printer fabric sheets. <laughs> so you'll have to figure out which ones you prefer the best but the ones I prefer the best are the color fast so in white okay so that's it that's your tutorial for making a picture quilt and that's just very generalized information there's so much more and with YouTube I haven't looked up YouTube videos on how to make printer fabric sheets but Google it and I'll bet you you can find all the information on this DVD for free out there on YouTube Okay, so now I'm going to go back and finish making bracelets, and I will see you guys again soon. Bye!